Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, and we're going to highlight uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. I'm going to read it from the NIV. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Well, I'm always thinking about worship and what does that look like. So uh, today I am reflecting back to 2014 when I read this uh, piece of scripture and the Lord began to minister to my heart. So as we are looking at worship, we want to know what does it really look like. At least that's what I want to know what it looks like. So see, uh, in the ability to always bring God what he deserves, you know, we have to examine our hearts and say, am I bringing God genuine worship? Uh, a sincere heart it's the the worship experience that we want to uh, engage in we want to know what it looks like what it feels what do I need to do to please God so I began to think about uh, Adam uh, what happened to him when you know when God created him he was the first uh, human being created and God made him so this, these are my thoughts, and I'm going to kind of read verbatim from my Be Inspired blog so that I don't miss any of the highlights that I want to share today. It reminds me of who I am. Uh, I'm His. He made me, and he's, the Bible says that I am co-heir with Jesus Christ. We read that in Romans 8, 17, verse 17. It's out of a heart of gratitude that praise rises up. Uh, the scripture says that we are to praise God. That's the way we've been created. We've been created to give Him praise. But my life is is broken it's it's full of mistakes so how do i bring god the proper praise does everything have to be well before god accepts my praise it's really a condition of the heart so follow me for a few moments so adam the first man god created you ever wondered what his expression was to god to his creator i mean here is adam being created it says that he created him out of the dust so when he awakens, if you will, when he is made, uh, you know, I don't even know how to use the language correctly. He was created, is what the Bible says. What were his first words to the Lord, to his maker, to his creator? Being that he was created to worship the Lord. What did he say when God formed him? God is spirit. When God was created, he was perfect without sin, and he enjoyed great fellowship with the Lord. Worship must have been as natural for him as breathing. Overwhelmed by this thought of Adam encountering God, I began to think, to, to ponder, if you will. Did he sing? Did he bow? What did he do? I imagine he began to adore his maker. A right relationship with God. There was no sin, no fall of the flesh. He was just like God had made him. Sin had not entered in yet. So what did he do? Did he sing him a song? When breath was entering his lungs, did he begin to sing to the Lord? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. The Spirit of God is hovering over him. This is a piece of clay, if you will, that God has just shaped and formed. He made him to reflect himself. God made Adam so that he would look like him. Adam is spirit, just like just like God. The Lord breathed life into him. So he was made to return glory back to God, uh, made in the likeness of God, um, uh, spirit being clothed in flesh, because this is who Adam is. There is no pain, there is no sickness, there is no envy, there is no strife or jealousy. There is nothing to hinder him from entering into this great worship service. Between him and his Lord, his God and his maker. No need for anything uh, of this life uh, to be uh, made complete. Uh, it was all done. It, it was perfect. I believe Adam must have adored his God from the moment he opened up his eyes and he realized that he was alive, that he was a being, that he was who he was, who God had made him to be. So what do we do? Do we bless God the same way? Do we wake up in the mornings and we say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Do we bless His holy name? Or do we go on just living life moment by moment? 
Well, now we have pain, we have disease, and selfishness has entered in. Um, we have every manner of sin. Our hearts or times are divided. But like David, the psalmist said, Lord, give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. There is still a, a deep cry within us, a desire I know within me to magnify God regardless of all my imperfections. We visit God in this secret place where we know that it's just Him and I, and we want every day to be just like that. So the goal is to enter in, to stay connected, to read the Word, to worship our God regardless of our imperfections, regardless of the troubles of this world, regardless of what's trying to steal our attention. God is worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all oh my inmost beings. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles. This is Psalm 105. It's just amazing. We as parents, if you're a parent, you know how uh, glorious it is to hold that child for the first time. And then when he says his first words, Mom or, or Dada, our hearts leap for joy. I believe God, when he made Adam, was just marveling in his creation and the perfection between him and his creature. Oh, what a beautiful time that must have been. And today he still allows us to come to him and to enjoy, regardless of the fallen world, we still can enjoy his presence, enjoy our God forever. Well, this has been Liz Rod, uh, reading to you from my backyard. Hope you've enjoyed it. Review Psalm 105. Our God is good. Bye for now.